If you're an avid chess fan, you've probably heard a thing or two about these two gentlemen in the past few days. On the left, we have the reigning world chess champion Magnus Carlsen, and on the right is 19-year-old grandmaster Hans Niemann. Now, if you haven't heard what happened between these two grandmasters, I'll give a brief recap now. On Sunday, September 4th, 2022, Hans Niemann defeated Magnus Carlsen with the black pieces in the third round of the Singfield Cup in St. Louis, Missouri, showcasing great technique and ending Magnus' 53-game unbeaten streak. What makes this win so remarkable is that 1. Hans was able to win with the black pieces, and 2. He made it look easy. After about 30 moves, Magnus Carlsen was lost, and although he almost managed to work his way back to equality, Hans played extremely well and got the victory. But what makes this so controversial, however, is that Magnus didn't show up for the next round, choosing to withdraw from the tournament. After his defeat, he posted a cryptic tweet stating that he had withdrawn from the tournament, along with a video from a famous interview in which Portuguese football manager Jose Mourinho says, If I speak, I'm in big trouble. Fans saw this as an indication that Magnus believed Hans had cheated in their game, but that he would be in trouble if he made a direct accusation against him. And that's when the story went viral. So, did Hans Newman cheat? Well, the only person who knows the answer to that is Hans himself, but I have my own opinion, and I'm going to go through the game and look at only what happened during the game, nothing um, nothing else, and then I'll tell you guys my opinion after after that. So, the first move was d4, and Hans played knight of 6, c4, e6, knight c3, bishop e4, and g3. So here's already an interesting point. So g3 by Magnus was something that Hans said he had uh, prepared for. People were debating this, saying that it was uh, a line that Magnus rarely, if if ever, uh, played. I mean, I don't really see the problem with it. I thought that it was good preparation. I thought that Hans was a big underdog coming into the tournament. So he was probably uh, looking at some rare sidelines, expecting some surprises. So don't really see anything too wrong with that. And uh, I'll just chalk it up to good preparation and maybe a bit of good fortune on Hans's part to guess the, um, or not guess, to predict the the opening choice by Magnus. But I guess some people think it's a bit suspicious, but we'll we'll um, we'll just look at the moves from now on. So castles was played and bishop g2, d5, a3, trade, trade, and take on c4. Knight f3 was played. I guess the idea here is that Magnus is down a pawn. But he wants to get some compensation by putting his bishop on e3, maybe rook on b1, using the long diagonal, getting castled, and trying to recuperate the c4 pawn eventually. c5 is played, castles, trade on d4, and note here if black takes, after knight takes, white should have decent compensation. The long diagonal plus semi-open file here plus a4 and the bishop getting to this diagonal seems pretty good for white. Seems like it will give him enough compensation. Knight c6 was played, queen takes c4, e5, bishop g5, h6, rook fd1. And here, Hans played bishop e6, which is an excellent move, and I guess this is another thing that people were kind of uh, suspicious about, is that he came up with this idea rather quickly, and any other move, like let's say queen e7, would give white a small advantage, like let's say takes, takes, and something like knight d2. Knight comes to e4, hops into some of these squares, the rook can stay on the b-file, bishop on the long diagonal, it's uh, pretty good for white, and somebody like Magnus can definitely press this advantage for a long time. However, bishop e6 solves all of black's problems, because if queen moves somewhere, then queen a5 can be played, and that ending, I mean, it's just going to be like a queen trade on a5, and then after an exchange on f6, black will just have much better pieces, and I mean, the, the pawns do a good job of boxing out the knight, and the knight defends the b7 pawn and has access to all these squares, so like queen b5, queen a5, this is all forced, and either bishop takes f6 or bishop back, but let's say if takes, this should be good for black. So Magnus took the, the queen instead, played rook takes d8, bishop takes c4, they exchange rooks, and king, uh, bishop takes f6 was played, recapture, and king f1. So here, black is a little bit better, but it's nothing too spectacular. Um, it's definitely a nice advantage though, but rook d8 was played, king e1, knight a5. Note that here, knight d2, not possible, because trade, or, or capture, capture, and knight b3, forking the rook and the king. So, rook d1, Hans correctly declines the trade of rooks, seeing that he can continue putting pressure on the c3 pawn. Some more moves are played, and here, Magnus 
made a decision to have like an active defense rather than passive defense. So he could defend a c3 pawn with rook c1 and just, um, I guess, suffer a little bit. <laughs> like these pieces are much better than, than white's pieces. And, you know, these pawns are split up. So black has a comfortable advantage. You know, probably play uh, f5 and e4. And it's going to take some uh, some passive defense to hold for white. But Magnus wanted to be active, so he played c4. Now this move is a pawn sacrifice. And bishop takes c4 is met with trading and rook d8. So king g7, or king g7, bishop d5, rook c7, and rook a8. So here Magnus has opted to sack a pawn in exchange for a better bishop on d5 and a more active rook. Black played a6, so uh, rook b8 was played, just making sure that he ties down black's pieces so that Hans can't improve. However, after f5, um, rook e8, and e4, Magnus plays a move that I think he should not have played. I think this was not a good move. He played g4. It sort of makes sense in, this, in the sense that you want to break up the pawns and target some weak pawns, but it kind of falls to it falls victim to Hans' next move, which is rook c5. And after bishop a2, Hans played knight c4. Now here, I guess the point, uh, one point I should mention is if you want to get sort of your, you want to get your pawn back, black can play like rook a4 and b5. And um, and just take this pawn, and then you'll have two connected passers, which is not good. So, Magnus played a4 instead, but this position is not really that great either. After a knight d6, rook e7, and take, white doesn't really have uh, anything to do, and the move that is sort of obvious that what Magnus played falls victim to a fantastic. Um, Fantastic move by Hans. So Magnus played rook d7, and it was met with the move e3. e3, the point is, if rook takes d6, you know, check here, take, take, and take the pawn, and we're queening. So white has to take, doubling up the pawns, and giving black an amazing knight on e4. King f1's played, check, king over, and rook goes back up. So in this position, basically one of these guys is to fall, so Magnus plays the move bishop takes f7. After rook takes e2, however, um, this position is not that amazing for Hans. It's he's definitely a lot. He's definitely better, but he had to play something different here. I think the computer recommended rook f5, but it seems pretty natural to play rook c1, rook c2. However, here um, Han, uh, Magnus can, can try his best and potentially hold. The problem is that he has to be very precise, and I think at this point, when he plays king f6, Magnus sort of went astray. He played bishop to d5, and after rook d2, he missed a very important idea, which is that after rook f7, king g6, rook d7, black can play the move knight g5, which Hans did, and this whole point, this whole like uh, idea behind this operation is that he wants to go bishop d5 here, rook f7, and then like king g6, bringing the rook back to d7, and then threaten bishop takes e4 or bishop f7, forcing the king back to a dark square. We can check again and then repeat the process. However, the move knight g5 solves black's problem because if you play bishop f7 as Magnus did in the game, white can, or black can play king f6 or king f5, and if you take the rook, black goes knight f3 check and forks the king the rook. And this is what happened during the game. So here, Magnus played king g2, Knight takes d2, um, a5 here. I mean, black is totally winning here. And um, basically, I'm going to talk a little bit about this at the end, but this is one of the reasons why I think, um, why I have my, my opinion is set. Is that one of, the, one of the important parts about this game is that obviously Hans played well, but Magnus played pretty poorly. He did not play the best moves. And when he did get the chance to equalize as... Um, as shown when Hans didn't play rook f5, he had better moves than than this like bishop d5, rook d7 idea. But he sort of uh, took his foot off the gas there and then let Hans uh, back into the driver's seat and then just have a winning position. Here, it doesn't really matter what you do. I mean, he played a5, this whole idea of like making sure these pawns stay on the light squares um, is like a good positional idea, but it's, it's too little too late. Uh, black's up a pawn and in these sort of endings with these like knight, bishop, and balances um, here, it's just uh, pretty obvious that the black's going to win this game. The e3 pawn is weak. The a5 pawn is weak. And um, and basically, black can always keep the bishop out of, of um, it, the squares it needs to get to to 
try to hold the draw. So black played king e5, and yeah, after king g3, Hans played knight f1 check, king f2, and then he took the h2 pawn. So here should be noted that if he goes up, um, you can just take these pawns, either of them. Um, king f2 here, e4. Yeah, this move is sort of uh, trying to bait the king to going up so that bishop e6 was played, which is what happened. Bishop e6 trying to go after these pawns. However, after king f4, bishop c8, knight f3, looks like white is in time to get this pawn, and it looks like if white can move and, and try to run this pawn down the board, um, they can have like a, a decent chance to to hold here. Unfortunately, after knight c6, black is winning the pawns, and white can't really do anything about it. So white chooses to box in the knight instead. However, uh, king and two pawns, right, with the knight against just a lone bishop and the king is, is not enough to hold. Black is totally winning here, and after h5, some more moves are played. Basically, after king e5, Magnus resigned, because the bishop is forced to move anywhere, and which will allow the knight to get out. So if bishop a8 is played, knight c4, if bishop f7 is played, knight c6. And here, I won't really go into this, but basically, um, black will just improve their position, something like this. And then slowly march down the board and just promote one of the pawns and um, and win the game and force white to sacrifice a bishop for one of the pawns, but but they'll be winning. So now that the game is shown, notice I didn't really talk about the game itself um, in too much detail. I didn't really find any brilliant moves by Hans. I thought that he played an excellent game, but it was all sort of simple chess. I think that... Uh, the main reason, well, I shouldn't say the main reason. I say there's two main reasons that, that Hans won, is that he had good preparation and he, and he played well. And the second is that Magnus just had a bad day. He played a bad game for whatever reason, uh, like an off day. And I think um, that really factored into the fact that um, that Hans got the victory and that he was well prepared and Magnus wasn't really, um, wasn't really too sharp. So that is why I think that Magnus lost... And that's also why I think that Hans did not cheat in this game. I didn't see anything too crazy. I thought if you're going to accuse him, I mean, maybe the preparation, like saying, that, oh, I predicted the line or something like that. But as far as the game itself, I think Hans just played a great game and Magnus might have just had an off day. So to answer the question, did Hans cheat in this game? My opinion is definitely no. Okay. Thank you so much, guys, for watching this video, and I'll see you guys in the next video.